reporting from Arkham Asylum. This is Gotham Rogues. In this video, we count down the five greatest Poison Ivy stories ever told. Out of the big trio of female bat rogues, Catwoman, Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy, I'd say that Ivy probably gets the least amount of attention. But when scourging through the Batman's comic book back catalogue, you will discover that dear old Pam actually have a whole slew of great stories dedicated to her. So let's take a look at the 5 very best ones. Of course this list is just my opinion, so feel free to write your own in the comments. Number 5. Cycle of Life and Death this is a six-part miniseries published earlier this year and actually Pam's very first solo title. It was written by Amy Chu and features the artwork of numerous pencilers, most notably Clay Mann. I did a review of this story a while back, so if you want a more in-depth look at it, go watch that video. I'll include a link in the description. In Cycle of Life and Death, we find a retired Poison Ivy working as a researcher at the Gotham Botanical Gardens. There she's discovered a way to create babies that are just just like her, half plant, half human. But when Pam's colleagues begin being bumped off, it becomes apparent that someone or something is after her children. What's so great about this story is the fact that we get to see Ivy in a completely new situation, namely in taking on the role of a nurturing parent. And it's just so fun to witness the fearsome super villainess Poison Ivy act as a hen mother. The kids themselves are also very interesting as they grow up real fast and have a very poor understanding of themselves and the world around them. It's made even worse by Ivy's overprotective behavior, but at the same time her actions are understandable as dangerous people are after the children. This story also excellently explores Pam's inner conflict between her plant side and her human side as she tries to reject any connection to humanity. Of course this is why she creates the hybrids in the first place, to live among those who are like her. Needless to say I'd love to see newcomer Amy Chu tackle more bat rogues. Number 4 Hot House Written by John Francis Moore and penciled by P. Craig Russell, this is a two-parter published in Legends of the Dark Knight in 1992. Set early in Batman's career, it tells the story of his second encounter with Poison Ivy. Rehabilitated and released from Arkham, Pam has resumed her studies of botany at the Gotham University on a grant arranged by Professor Ian Spencer. While conducting her research there, Ivy accidentally creates a new mind-altering psychedelic drug she names Eden Spring. Spencer, who has connections to some shady characters, forms a partnership with white-collar drug peddler Dominique Alioso in the interest of selling Eden Spring as a designer drug. However, when Spencer is mysteriously killed, their little scheme is brought to the attention of Batman. This is a really good neo-noir mystery story where we follow Batman trying to figure out who killed who and why. At the same time, he's also forced to deal with Ivy's powers over him, and we've never seen him be more in the the palm of her hand. This comic easily features the greatest depiction of Pamela's influence on Batman's mind. Her pheromone powers are so strong that Bruce becomes completely obsessed with her, thinking of Ivy non-stop, causing his work to be disrupted. At one point he even snaps at Commissioner Gordon, which is of course totally out of character for the stoic Dark Knight. The big theme of this story is control. Pamela has been controlled her entire life by various people. Jason Woodrow, the man who created Poison Ivy, the doctors at Arkham, Ian Spencer, Dominique Alioso, but now finally she's going to be the puppeteer. It's a very unique portrayal of the character too. She looks like just an ordinary woman and feels very mentally fragile. Sure, Pam does bad things, but you can't help but feel a bit sorry for this poor, disturbed and abused person. Number 3. A Walk in the Park Another two-parter, this one was written by Greg Rucka and penciled by Sean Martinbro. It was published across two issues of Detective Comics in 2000 and takes place shortly after the massive No Man's Land arc. During the events of No Man's Land, when due to a devastating earthquake, Gotham was sealed off, abandoned and run by tribal warfare, Poison Ivy seized control of Robinson Park, turning it into a wild, untamed jungle. Her territory was basically untouched by the rest of the city as those who entered it never came out alive. Ivy did however surprisingly take in and care for children orphaned during the quake. 
A year later, Gotham was reopened and rebuilt, so everything went back to normal for the city, except for Robinson Park. This story takes place several months after the end of No Man's Land, and Ivy and her orphans are still occupying the park. The mayor and Commissioner Gordon have repeatedly failed at evicting her or even negotiating with Ivy, so the only solution left is to get rid of the entire park by spraying it with the powerful herbicide RC60. That is, unless Batman can solve the problem within a few hours. This story is a bit similar to the first entry on this list, namely that it places Pamela in the role of a caretaker of kids. The nurturing mother instinct is more prevalent within Ivy than she'd probably care to admit. However, she's not really these children's mother, it's more of a guardian protector relationship. She took them in, fed them, and gave them a home when no one else would. Since they are orphans, they don't really have anywhere else to go. Ivy and the park is all there is for them, but now that's about to be taken away. Of course, Pamela Pamela can't have that. Even though she's technically the villain, Ivy is kind of the hero of this story. This comic also brilliantly explores the question of whether Pam is more plant or more human. At first, Batman believes that she only cares about the park itself, but he learns otherwise as he witnesses the love Ivy holds for the orphans. Number 2. Pavan a one-shot published in Secret Origins number 36 in 1988. It was written by Neil Gaiman and penciled by Mark Buckingham. In this story, Ivy is visited in jail by a government agent named Stuart, who poses as a prison inspector. He's been tasked to evaluate whether Poison Ivy is a suitable recruit for the Suicide Squad, or if she's to be transferred to Arkham Asylum instead. While interviewing the prisoner, gaining some insight into her background, Stuart is seduced by Pam, becoming completely obsessed with her. So, like many of the stories published in the 80s title Secret Origins, we don't really get that much of an origin here. We're shown a few glimpses of Pamela's past as she's interviewed by Agent Stewart. Her early love for both flowers and boys, her studies with Jason Woodrow, aka the Floronic Man, her growing obsession with Batman, which led to Pam's criminal career. But nothing is really in depth. Instead, the focus here is on Ivy's seduction of Stewart. This is one story where Pamela is not portrayed in a sympathetic light. No, she's a sinister manipulator. I just love the way her pheromone powers are depicted in this comic. They are so effective that looking at her through a security camera is enough to make you fall under Ivy's spell. Stuart is a grown man, a competent government agent, yet he's turned into a blushing, stuttering schoolboy by the mere sight of Pamela's smile. The story is told from his perspective, and sometimes it can be really interesting to witness big pop popular characters like Ivy through the eyes of someone small like that. She comes off as very creepy and dangerous in the story, which easily features the best portrayal of Poison Ivy's seductive side. And now for the greatest Poison Ivy story of them all. Number 1. Poison Ivy the story, simply titled Poison Ivy, is a special one-shot graphic novel released in 1997. It was written by John Francis Moore and penciled by Brian Apthorpe. In it, Ivy has escaped from Arkham Asylum and settled on a remote island somewhere in South America. Before she arrived, it was a barren rock where nothing grew, but using her command over Flora, Pam has turned it into a lush paradise. Ivy plans to live there in peace for the rest of her life and to never bother mankind ever again. However, Pamela's dreams are turned into ashes before her very eyes, as a band of arm stealers use the island in their testing of a new weapon known as Prometheus. Ivy then cancels her retirement plans and goes on a quest for vengeance, punishing everyone involved with Prometheus, including its secret manufacturer Christopher de Jardin, an associate of Bruce Wayne. So this is another one written by John Francis Moore. I guess the guy just really has a knack for writing Ivy. Most of the stories on this list have portrayed Pam in a sympathetic light, but none of them do it better than this graphic novel. Ivy was completely genuine about staying on that island and would have left Gotham and her wicked ways behind her if it just weren't for those arm stealers. She's not really a villain at all here, but more of an anti-hero, as her actions aren't really any different from the Punishers or other similar characters. Prometheus didn't just destroy all plant life on the island, but it also killed a young girl who was there to see Ivy. Not to mention all the additional damage these people would have caused with the weapon. So while you may not approve of Pam's methods, she certainly has a point. 
Like in a lot of Killer Croc stories, the main focus of this comic is on Ivy finding a home, a place where she belongs, as it's explained that she hates it in the concrete jungle of Gotham. She does find that place of hers, only to have it taken away, setting her on a killing spree. Which leads to the next big question, when getting your revenge, how far is too far? We sympathize with Ivy, but isn't she taking it to the extreme? She even goes after the inventor of Prometheus, a nerdy scientist who had no control over how it was used. Does he really deserve punishment? That's an interesting debate. How far does the blame reach? No other story have portrayed Pamela is such a morally fascinating character, and that's why this is the definitive Poison Ivy story. If you're a fan of Pamela and have missed out on this comic, then you really need to get your hands on it. So there you have it, those are the 5 greatest Poison Ivy stories ever told, in my opinion. Remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.